just realized that I've done so many videos of me and so many different cars and motorcycles, you probably have no idea what I've actually got at this point. So I decided to throw this little video together to show you what we've got in the driveway at the moment and what the status of each of the vehicles is. We'll just go in order from newest to oldest, just because I feel like it. Which means we'll start with Pam's 2006 Toyota Highlander. You don't hear a lot about this vehicle because, well, it's boring. It has the Toyota 3.3 liter V6. It's all wheel drive, factory towing package, which was handy when we towed the CRX down to Keene, New Hampshire. Sweet leather interior, JBL sound system, my favorite part, butt warmers. Excellent in winter. Best of all, despite all the problems with Toyotas lately, no unintended acceleration recall. I think this came out the year before the affected vehicles for that. It may be boring, but it's been the most reliable vehicle in our fleet. Better be for being a 2006 and for what she paid for it. The next newest, well, if you've seen my videos, you know this one. It's a 1991 Mazda Miata. Lightning McQueen edition. Pam's son loves the movie Cars, so I put these on the car just for him. Nothing fancy under the hood here. Just the stock 1.6 liter engine that came with this car. Stock airbox and everything. Only modification, if you can call it that, is the NGK spark plug wires, but that's pretty common for, well, pretty much every Miata owner anyway. This is a rebuilt salvage car, believe it or not. Couldn't tell from driving it. As you can see, it has a manual passenger mirror. No power window controls in the center console. But this, on the driver's door, is a power mirror. Also has this nice tilt-in feature, which I never use, but yeah, that's a power mirror. So this side of the door got smashed at one point, but it runs, drives, goes down the road great, and uh, well, fun to autocross. The only performance modifications to this car are Hawk HPS front brake pads and Falcon Azena's RT615 tires. We ran them on the CRX alloys for autocross last year, wore out the outer edge, so we're running these as our regular everyday street tires this year and figure we'll get a little more even wear out of them. One other modification is the European spec H4 headlights. They just drop in instead of the regular sealed beams, but it's got a brighter bulb and a better beam pattern. Recommended for any car with sealed beams. The only other modification coming along, <clears throat> at least according to the current plan, is these. A set of Kony STRT shock absorbers. These are the least expensive Kony shock, non-adjustable, unlike the typical Kony yellows that people get from Miatas, but uh, the price is right and uh, it'll work for what we want it to do. Right scooter? Next in line, also a 91, but newer to me, is this Nissan Sentra. Sentra SCR to be exact. Which means it has Nissan's popular SR20 motor, high revving, and two liters, so plenty of torque for around town driving. I call it the Millennium Falcon, especially because of this paint job that is definitely an ongoing work in progress. But mechanically, the car is sound. She may not look like much, but she's got her accounts, kid. Well, mostly. It did break down on our way to our first autocross it was ever going to compete in a couple of weeks ago, and was out of action for two weeks until just yesterday. The uh, rotor set screw had backed out, trashed the rotor and the cap, and the uh, distributor got all out of whack. It took me a while to figure out the distributor was the remaining cause of its no-start condition, uh, but Pam kept on me to uh, give the distributor a try before giving up and taking it to a shop, and. Lo and behold, it works, so we're back on the road again. The 1988 Honda CRX SI, also known as Le Skunk, it works. You saw it running in the previous video. 
does still have a couple of minor issues. I tried transplanting this uh, Civic SI seat into it. The seat's in great shape, but holes don't quite line up. So I'm going to have to swap the old seat back in for safety. The water leak has been fixed by blowing out the sunroof drains. Unfortunately, while lowering the car off the uh, jack stands after putting the transmission back in, uh, we seem to have sprung a, uh, a new leak. Uh, this whole area right here kind of popped up, came undone, and needs to be rewelded. So we're about to take this over to a friend's house who is going to accomplish that task for us. Thanks, Adrian. After that, just a matter of uh, getting it a sticker, and it'll be back on the road, probably attending some autocross events as well. Finally. Not in the driveway right now is the 1986 Suzuki Savage Project Bike. This was purchased for 300 bucks a couple of years ago uh, with a no-start condition. Uh, it turned out that it had lots of compression and when the previous owner ran it out of oil on the main turnpike. Not so good. So a friend and I tore down and rebuilt the entire motor over the past year and a half or so, off and on. Mostly off, I admit. But just this past weekend, we put it back together, put it back in the bike, and fired it up for the first time since we've had it. It was only then that we found that the new tire, uh, the new rear tire that we got for it was mounted backwards, it's a directional tire. So we're having that remounted today, and hopefully pretty soon I'll be riding that thing home. So the only real disappointment right now is this, my 1982 Suzuki. GS 1100L. Riding season started a month plus early in Maine this year and I've been missing out. I haven't gotten a ride in yet on this bike. There's a problem in the clutch. If I try to pull the clutch lever it just sticks. The linkage down here isn't stuck because this swings back and forth just fine but I cannot disengage the clutch, so I must have done something wrong when I replaced the clutch springs last fall, and uh, I haven't figured out what yet. Before this problem, I was very happy with the bike, and I'm sure I will be again once I get this problem fixed. And this one's shaft drive. Easy, low maintenance, no messy chain, don't have to lube the chain, just got to make sure it's got gear oil. Ask me how I learned that on my first Suzuki, also shaft drive, until I killed it. I got this bike last year for 350 bucks, just a little more than the Savage. It was in running condition. The story behind it is it was a crash victim. It used to be a full dresser, fairing, hard bags, the whole kit and caboodle, until a previous owner had an unfortunate meeting with a moose. You can still see the dent in the gas tank from where the handlebars hit it. Fortunately, the uh, bags and everything took the brunt of the impact, and the bike was rebuilt by the people I bought it from to be mechanically sound. I did save the saddlebags from my last bike. I had to install turn signals because it didn't come with any that worked. It had a speedometer that didn't work, but I found at Main Cycle Warehouse, which is where all the local UJMs go when they die, a GS1100L parts bike and I got this entire gauge cluster from it and everything worked. I got all the wiring and everything works perfectly, even the gas gauge on a motorcycle. How weird is that? So that's where we're at. The CRX is getting welded up. I gotta figure out what's wrong with my bike and then we'll all be back in business. If you'd like to know more about any of these vehicles, even the boring Highlander, Drop me a comment and maybe I'll make a video about that vehicle in particular.